uh, welcome to uh, part three of the Thinking Trap series. We have covered unrealistic expectations in week one and discounting the positive in week two. You will find the more that we talk about these different um, areas that they kind of all hover and overlap, but they're all nuanced. And so I um, feel it's important to kind of delve into some of them separately so that we really hone in on that aspect of thinking um, again, I think that the unreal, unrealistic expectations one is really like the umbrella that kind of captures a lot of the different nuanced ones that we're going to talk about. Um, the sub thinking patterns, I guess you could say. Um, but that one is, hi Mocha, there goes Mocha. Hello. <laughs> Everyone say hi to Mocha. All right, Mocha, we got to move girl. She's like, where are you sending me? But anyway, y'all, this is, this is my little baby. Um, but um anyway we are okay all right now what now what are we doing you gotta you you've got to go you guys i'm, sorry. I'm recording mocha mm -mm. come on come on all right y'all lord bless it lord bless it. it's like little babies little children sit stay um anyway so we have covered unrealistic expectations and discounting the positive and this week we're going to talk about Overgeneralization is what we're going to talk about for tonight. And I like this one because this one is a, a sneaky one, as they all kind of can be. But this is a sneaky one that I feel like needs a highlighted um, discussion just to make sure that as we're uh, making our expectations more realistic, as we're not filtering out the positive of our experience, we also don't want to be drawing large conclusions based on like singular events. And that's basically what overgeneralization is, is when we um, create an element of defeat or assumption over something that happened one time, okay? And I know we'll get into, well, what if it happens all the time? And it's gonna say, well, that's where we have to really challenge our thinking as to whether, does this happen every single time, 100% no fail, or are there some areas where it doesn't happen that we can pull forward to build and grow upon. All right, so overgeneralization is when we draw a conclusion and then extend it beyond our current circumstances. What does this sound like? This sounds like always and never, okay? If you have kids, if you have kids or if you have nieces and nephews or just children around you in any capacity in general, if you're a teacher or whatever, you will hear this often. You never let me do this. It's always, you know, and, it, and then they just go into a meltdown. And y'all, it's a great demonstration of how overgeneralization is very emotionally driven and can really just like completely uh, unravel someone emotionally to think that way, right? So when we see children doing it, say, you never let me get my way. I always have to, and it's like, no, no, you know, that's not true. <laughs> You know good and well that's not true but it's the mindset it's the mindset that catches us up and this thinking trap generates a, pop, a pattern of defeat and helplessness it's it, it i mean if you think about it if something always happens or it never happens we're not creating an opportunity for change for possibility you know what i'm saying and so this is the same for changes that you're making in your life or patterns of being or doing that you want to unlearn. If you are constantly telling yourself, I always do this, I always do this, I always do this, or it's never gonna work out for me, it never, I never can sustain it, it never goes well, it's like, well, where is the window, where is the door open for change? It's like that kind of does put you in a place of helplessness to say something is absolute all the time, never changing, and just to really name it that way can be a very defeating thought, all right? So I'm not really here to debate whether something happens often or most of the time or a lot of the, you know, whatever the case may be. I'm here to say, is that thinking process helpful to you? That's really all we're here to talk about. So the thinking patterns in general, um, it is what it is. Sometimes the reality is there is a high percentage of that situation <laughs> happening or there's a low percentage of that situation happening. But when you're in a headspace where you're trying to change, you're t sick and tired of being sick and tired, you are um, looking for you know, the silver lining um, to be able to grasp onto to change, that thinking pattern no longer works. 
It doesn't work for the headspace that you're headed toward. It doesn't work when you have a goal that you want to reach to continue to play the tape of this always happens, this will never happen, and you can fill in the blank with whatever this is. Um, but it's that always and never that really kept, catches us up. And when we say those things, we're bound to stay stuck. Again, the helplessness of that statement leaves us with nothing to work with, nothing to learn from to move ourselves forward. All right, so does everybody get that? It's really always and never, those absolute statements are really the telltale signs of this overgeneralizing situation. So what happens? We, let's go with fitness and workouts because you know that's, that's one of the anchors of what we talk about here, right? So if you say, I always end up uh, stopping or I never can sustain the success or the progress that I've made, that's really setting you up to say, what is the point in even trying, right? If you come in with that mentality, it really makes it hard to find anything that we can build upon that you have done. And the reality is, is that most of us have done something. For example, uh, there are some of us that are continuing on with the movement challenge for a second month in the B3 crew uh, membership, right? And so someone else might be saying, uh, I never can, in this moment, that's actually doing it, say you missed a day, say you, you've missed a week, whatever the case may be, you might say, I always do this. I never can sustain and keep, and keep going with anything. This always happens. And if we look back into January, and maybe you did the 31 days with us, maybe you did 25 out of the 31 days, there's evidence that you can do it. We just have to find what works in this chapter. We have to find um, the best way to move forward. You see how I'm already changing the language around that? The always and never really doesn't give us much to work with, all right? So let's feel the weight of these statements. I'm just gonna read you all some statements and I want you to just think about how does this make you feel? What emotion does this elicit from you? I always do this. You always do this. This always happens. They're always laughing at me. I never can stay consistent. You never show up for me. It will never happen. They never believe in me. When you think about that and you sit with that, that's heavy. That's heavy and that's dark, right? Um, and so have we all been there? We've all been there. We've all thought this before, but when you hear those eight statements listed out that way, it really starts to shine light on like, wow, ooh, that is, that is heavy. So I'm gonna say them again. I always do this, you always do this. Ooh, that one has a little resentment in it. I don't know. <laughs> it's the use for me. <laughs> Those use statements hit a little different, okay? So it's I always do this, you always do this. I don't know, ooh, that one just, it's like, mm, dang. All right, this always happens. They're always laughing at me. I can, I never can stay consistent. You never show up for me. It will never happen. They never believe in me. I mean, that's a really debilitating, defeating, and disappointing emotional state. So that's what I think about when I think about those words. I think about disappointment, discouraged, hopeless. That's what I think about, right? So we need to recondition our minds to think about this thing differently. Is there evidence that something is happening at a frequency that we don't want? Yes, maybe that's true, all right? Some of us, that's not even true, but maybe let's just go so far as to say that is true. The reality is that there's probably evidence, maybe not as much evidence, maybe not as prominent and fresh on your mind, but there is evidence of you doing something different. Sometimes I take my clients through even looking back at, let's not even look at this year, let's look at, let's look at your life. You know what I'm saying? Let's look at things that you've overcome. Let's look at things that you have actually changed. There's something in your life that you have overcome. And sometimes it's not even about mustering up new energy or finding a new solution. Sometimes it's about revisiting and remembering what works for me in general. It's just like, okay, so how can I apply whatever was helping me in that season to this season? It may look different. We're not comparing my results or my outcome to that season, we are finding what is good and um, relevant to the current situation to pull forward. 
You know what I'm saying? So this isn't a, oh, I used to be able to do this amount of, you know, reading each day. And then now I can barely even, you know, pick up a devotional to read, read five sentences. Okay, well, that's not what we're going back here to look for. We're going back to look for, wow, you used to um, enjoy reading. You used to set aside time in your day. You used to find books that really inspired you and invigorated you. And that made it easier for you to be invested and, um, and um, eager, I guess you could say, or even desiring, craving to have that space in your life. How can we pull that forward? That's evidence that it's not always the same. It's not, it's not a never gonna happen again situation. It can happen again. You just have to change your mind, okay? So, again, I'm not here to debate whether the truth of the statement, I'm here to debate whether it's helpful, all right? So, what the questions I want you to ask when it comes to this, if you're debating or if you're still struggling with whether you can really let go of this type of thinking pattern, is this thinking helping me become a better person? Is this thinking helping me change anything? Does this thinking, thinking excuse me, encourage me to take action? Okay? If the answers are no to that, it's time to change it up. It's time to change it up. It's the thinking in itself that's keeping you stuck. Right? We're all capable. We're all capable of shifting. It may not be at the intensity or um, to the extreme that it was in a different stage of life. I know that a lot of times we reminisce on our youth and what we used to be able to do and how we used to be able to do things. And it's just like, well, there's a different level of responsibility at this stage in life. Our bodies are different. They have been through more. We have to adjust, you know, for our reality now. But it's never, listen to me saying it, it's never an always or nothing type of situation. There's, there's always, if we can use the same words I told you to stop using, there's always some sort of opportunity to learn and revisit or even just completely uh, revamp the way that you move towards change now. So I'm hearing, I'm seeing in the chat that it feels like very dark and there are, there's really no um, absolutes. There really are no absolutes. It's a mindset thing that has us think that. Diane says, I know there are no absolutes. A defensive statement for me sometimes or often, but not always and never for me. I love that. I love that idea of sometimes and often. That's good. That's good. We're coming out of the absolutes that we've talked about throughout the course of this, the unrealistic expectations gets us in the absolutes, discounting the positive keeps us in the absolutes, and then overgeneralizing is another expression of the absolutes, but we have to break this down because it's sneaky <laughs> in the way that it starts to show up. So it's like, okay, I'm not discounting the positive, but then I'm saying never and always, and it's like, okay, well, I can't think that way either. It's kind of a function of the same, the same sabotage, really, okay? So, We've got to figure out a way to transition these statements from, from an emotional place to an empowered place, okay? So how can I take my thinking from being completely driven by emotion? Think about when, we're, uh, when I was talking about children who sometimes do this, of course, their brains aren't all the way developed. They don't see the gray area as well as we can as adults from just living life and knowing that things tend to work out and that sort of thing. They, they don't have that capacity, but we do if we allow our minds to mature into that headspace. If we say, I'm not going to stay stuck in that type of headspace that, you know, would be something like a child might think, right? So how can we move those statements from emotionally based to empowerment based? How can I allow, how can I change that wording to energize and facilitate forward movement okay so we're going to do that with some of the statements that i just said okay and feel free to chime in with your own um because th this is just mine <laughs> but i would love to hear some of your all's um, um ways of thinking with this like diane's chime in was very very helpful here um i always do this okay an example that i uh, came up with for us to think about this differently is i need help figuring out how to do this differently okay I'm not lying to myself. I'm not being a positive patty where, you know, everything is well and it's, you know, thinking in like a delusional type of headspace or anything. 
it's not even about debating what is actually happening. It's about realizing I need help figuring out how to, how to do this differently. That is, to me, that feels empowered. I know asking for help is sometimes a little tricky for some of us, but I really see that as an empowered state too. To acknowledge that I don't have to do something on my own all the time, that maybe I need a different opinion or a different type of support or you know a different solution to my to my issue um, but it's still an empowered state of, of hopefulness that when I get this help I'm gonna figure out how to do this differently completely different than I always do this period I always do this period has no exploration in it no essence of possibility in it I need help figuring out how to do this differently is a little bit more open-ended. The posture is a little bit more like there's something else out there that I'm missing and I need to figure that out. I want to figure that out. Maybe it's not even I need help. I want help figuring out how to do this differently. Same situation, different mindset. You always do this. Ooh, it's those resentful statements for me. <laughs> you always do this. It's so... <laughs> Boy, there is just, oh, there is, I don't know why that just, <laughs> maybe this is me thinking in my therapist, like in my uh, therapy session stuff. It's like whenever somebody starts saying, you always do this, that's, that's, that's something you really have to unpack. That will eat you and your relationship up if that's the case, if, in, if that's the environment that it's happening in. So what can we say? You always do this, all right? We can say, I want something different from you. I need something different from you. Okay, instead of you, 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 you all, it's kind of like blocking, it's kind of boxing that person in, right? And it's making it seem hopeless in that I have no faith in you to do anything differently. You always do this. It's very hot if you think about it that way, right? So let's think about it this way. I want something different from you. I need something different, different from you. That to me, again, feels open-ended because now I can tell you some some options or some suggestions, excuse me, on what actually can be frame, reframed in a different way. Um, and as you guys are hearing these, please um, feel free to chime in with your own reframes. Monique uh, uh, worded that perfectly. That's exactly what we're doing. We're reframing our mindset in order to help us move forward. All right. This always happens. I'm working to experience this less. I know you're like, okay, Kristen, that's semantics. It's like, what does that mean? No, it's not just semantics. It has a different posture with it that has possibility attached to it. I want to have a changed experience with this situation, okay? We're not here to measure how often this happens. We're here to move into the action. I want to see something different. I'm, I'm ready to move past experiencing this this way. I'm ready to move past this obstacle doesn't matter how often it happens. When your mind is made up to find a different way, the score doesn't matter anymore. The score doesn't matter. The score only matters when you feel defeated. When you feel like the score is 80 to zero, that's when we start to think that way, okay? So we are leveling the playing field. It is zero to zero. As soon as I change my mind, which you can do at any point, any time of the day, you could renew your mind, change your mind, refresh your perspective, and move forward. And so anytime I do that, there's um, opportunity for me to start fresh. All right, let's go to some of these nevers and see what we can do. Uh, let's see, it will never happen. Mm. I want to find a way to make this happen or to change my situation. Desire, longing, empowerment, forward moving energy, forward moving thoughts, right? I want to find a way to make this happen. I hear hope in that statement. I hear, I hear empowerment for sure in that statement. That means I desire it, I'm taking ownership, and I believe that there's a different way to do this, okay? It may take me not doing it the same way I've been doing it, but I wanna figure out what that is, and I'm ready to do that. That's what I hear in that statement. Uh, I can never stay consistent. Again, I would go back to, I want help being more consistent. I need help being more consistent. There's gotta be a better way to be more consistent. Something that just uplifts the whole mindset. And then lastly, we'll say <laughs> the resentful one, you never show up for me. I want you to show up for me more. 
here's how. And of course I'm adding the here's how because if you're speaking to someone else, it's really um, a situation where you know you wanna be able to articulate what that looks like because people are not mind readers. And you might say, well, I always give them suggestions. Okay, well, even if that person isn't able to um, show up for you for whatever reason, it's time to find a new way. Okay, if I have an accountability partner for walking daily or for um, reducing how much I eat out or for making sure I sign up and get connected with a therapist or, you know, just whatever you may, may get an accountability buddy or whatever to help you with, if they always uh, leave you hanging or they're never there when you need them, that doesn't mean that the accountability partner concept doesn't work. That means that a change is needed <laughs> in order for you to experience the accountability that, that you need. And then that's when you go back into, I need a different type of help to figure this out. Okay, you see how there's always a way around thinking with that headspace of always and never. Always and never has a hard stop at the end. We need to find opportunity. We need to find strengths, okay? So this mindset shift is um, essential for your journey, okay? I don't know what you guys are dealing with. I don't know, you know, um, in what area this could be applicable, but there probably is an area, maybe something that you'll discover as you continue working, you know what I mean, on different things. I know uh, for the movement challenge, um, that aspect of change or consistency has come easier to some people than others. And so that may not be an issue for you, right? But when we think about the five different habits that I talk about here, which is moving more, eating well, sleeping well, staying hydrated, managing stress, usually there's something in one of those five that could look better and or could be going better, you know? And so you may not need that mentality shift in the movement area, but maybe when it comes to managing your stress, which would include setting boundaries with people, in, implementing self-care, signing up to get into therapy, uh, journaling more, whatever the habit is that's attached to that part, you may find this word, I can never journal. I, I'm, just, I'm just not a good journaler. I never, it never works out for me. I always end up stopping after a certain point. Okay, well, let's talk about the different types of journaling that you can do. Maybe that format of journaling is not for you. I would say in this example, uh, a lot of times when people think of journaling, they think of lighting a candle, putting on the calming meditation music, opening a plain notebook with fresh paper and a nice fresh pen and just writing out their thoughts, right? They just imagine, yeah, this is how the journalers do it. They just, they just get to writing and just free flows. Well, for some people, that's not something that works for them. And that's okay. What we do is we don't say that I can never journal and I always end up, you know, whatever the headspace may be. It might be, I need to try and do this differently, okay? What else could you do, for example? There are guided journaling prompts that can kind of help hone in on a certain topic area or can just kind of, you know, um, inspire further thought. Some people need that, need a question asked and then they answer the question and once they get going, it is a little bit more of a free-flowing thing, but it doesn't just come out of thin air for them. And that's okay. But that doesn't mean that journaling in and of itself is not helpful to you. That just means I have to find out how to do this differently. I have even seen people say, like teachers or something, they're just like, or, or I'm thinking of a teacher in mind, but it could be any line of work that you do. But if you're burned out on that type of uh, communication, you know what I'm saying? For some people, it's a, um, a visual journal, you know what I mean? They will set up their phone and they just talk into their phone. That is an element of journaling. That's an element of releasing, articulating yourself, letting your thoughts out and getting them outside of your head. That's all that journaling is about. Some people are bullet point journal journalers. They're listers, that's okay. We just gotta get it out of here and get it onto the paper. So I just wanna give you all an example of how instead of boxing that, coping skill up as being something that just doesn't work for you, we shift our mindset and we say, I need to do this differently, or I need some help doing this differently. And oh, Kristen gave a couple of other ways that I can journal that I didn't even think about. Let me try those before I just completely write it off. Because ultimately, there are, um, there are times when we need to be able to process 
what's in our head in a different way and just spinning it here is not helpful. Another example I'll give is vision boarding. I actually did this and I tried, I've been trying this one the last couple of months is that I, um, I let me make sure I'm framing this up and not saying always and never, but I find it difficult. <laughs> find it difficult to do like the traditional vision board with the magazines and the cutouts and the glue. I just find it hard to do that, okay? That's my truth, that's my truth. And I saw someone, um, maybe it was on threads or Twitter or some on social media somewhere that was like, do a Pinterest board, vision board. Y'all, I had never thought of that. Never thought of that before. A vision board on Pinterest. So all I have to do is just go through pictures and then when I see something, I, maybe I type in self-care, maybe I talk in, or type in, you know, whatever the topic may be that I envision for myself and then I can just pin the pictures to a board. <gasps> That's a vision board. Wow. My mind is blown, right? It's just rethinking it. It's rethinking how to make it work for yourself. That's, that's pretty much what I have for today. It's just uh, examples of reframing those always and never statements, the overgeneralizing when something happens that feels similar, that feels familiar to you, instead of saying out loud or, or thinking and affirming in your head that this always happens, reframe and shift. That, that is all, that is my time for tonight. Thank you all so much for joining in live and chiming in. I hope this is helpful to you. Again, this is a layered in process with the unrealistic expectations, discounting the positive, overgeneralizing our lives. And again, we'll have a part four that will kind of um, wrap, wrap all of these thinking processes up and hopefully help us have a mindset shift moving forward. But spend some time this week thinking about in what areas of your life, again, y'all, these talks are not just about fitness. They're not even really about, well, I guess they would be about wellness, but they're not just about exercise and fitness and body and you know all of those things this could be across the board this could be relational you know career wise this could be in a lot of different areas and so i want you to explore for yourself where does this show up for me and how can i continue to improve upon it if there's an area of your life where you don't struggle with this that means that there's the possibility for you to carry that over into a new area y'all have a good night bye